Hello, this is Kyleshka from TheByzantineLife.com, where we share Byzantine Catholic family living. Be bold. Be beautiful. Be Byzantine. Now that we have mastered meals, it is time to talk about another aspect of home management. A clean home. This week we're clearing up our cleaning plans. Being able to keep a home clean is actually more complicated than it sounds. In fact, it requires having all the earlier parts of our home management system in place. First, cleaning requires a decluttered space. Too much stuff means it is too difficult to get to the surfaces to clean them. A cluttered space takes hours to clean, whereas a decluttered space can take as little as five minutes for the same task. Clutter equals distraction, and it is a barrier to get to the surfaces that need cleaning. Second, cleaning requires homes for our stuff. If we have things with no place to go, no designated home within our home for our stuff to go, then they gather on the floor and other surfaces of our home. This also applies to things we use every day, if our home for these things makes it too difficult to put these things away frequently. Getting organized and deciding on a place for each item in our home to go actually saves us time. It saves us time tidying before a clean and time looking for lost items. Third, cleaning requires us to be consistently tidying our home. Tidying up after ourselves takes discipline and there are two skills we need to develop in order to keep on top of it. One skill is following the one minute rule. If it takes less than a minute to put it away, do it now. How often do we leave a cup on the counter that would take five seconds to slip into the dishwasher? Or leave a pen on the table when it goes in a drawer that's four steps away? Then these bits of clutter attract more clutter, and before we know it, the house looks like a disaster. Skill number two is taking time to tidy throughout the day. We need to spend five minutes tidying here and there throughout the day. This is an area where the whole family can work together in building virtue. Maybe spend five minutes before lunch, five minutes in the afternoon, and then five minutes in the evening tidying up our homes. And maybe even wipe a counter or two down in the process. If we do this, our homes will look good even without a proper clean. Set a timer for 10 minutes before each meal or another habitual activity and have everyone go around the house tidying. Remember that tidying is not the same as decluttering or organizing. Tidying is putting away the things we use during the day in the place where they belong. So, once these prerequisites are in place, we can make a plan to keep our home consistently clean. Start off by considering who in the family can actually help with cleaning tasks. This is going to vary by family and season of life. Right now my eldest, little Fox, is four, so she can help in a limited capacity. My next child, little Badger, is only two, so her version of helping usually just creates more work for me. Although I do try to find cleaning tasks for her that don't hinder my progress, even if it isn't actually helping in the traditional sense. So what are my two and four year old able to do? Well, they can both help put away their laundry and help bring me dishes to put away from the dishwasher. Also, I could teach them the proper way to sleep and mop, but I haven't had the time and energy to address that although I know of two and a half year olds capable of sweeping a room. The girls do help with dusting quite successfully and with wiping down their table after meals. My four year old has also recently learned to scrape her plate before putting it by the kitchen sink. As they get older, I will teach them even more things they can do to help out around the house. And I'm looking forward to teaching them these life skills. One thing to note here though, is that we are not calling cleaning tasks chores. Tasks to help out around the house aren't chores. It isn't a chore to help the family. It is an act of charity. Or, at the very least, simply fulfilling one's personal responsibilities. And it makes it easier for me to do mundane tasks like cleaning 
when I remember I'm doing it because I love God and my family. And that is the mindset I want to pass down to my children. So once you have an idea of how many people in your family can help you out, you're able to think realistically about how much you can get done and how often. If you're a mama with three babies under three, Washing windows is probably pretty low on the priority list, and that's okay. And actually, it's okay if it is low on the priority list even when you have three teenagers. Although perhaps that is a task that the teenagers are capable of helping out with. So, to decide what your family can get done, start by making a priority list. Write down which cleaning tasks matter to you. Which cleaning tasks are at the heart of making your home a happy and comfortable place to be. And there's a worksheet for this in the Economia free printable set. Given that cleaning tasks are something I mainly do on my own in this season of our family life, I can realistically get done the top five tasks in a cleaning work week. Things that are lower on the list either don't get done, window cleaning, or get done when the need for the task raises up on the priority list because it has gotten visually bad, like the microwave, or happen when I have some help from my husband, like washing the sheets. Washing sheets is higher on my husband's cleaning priority list than mine, so when he prompts me to wash the sheets, I do so, and then I have his help to help get them back onto the bed. Cleaning tasks are generally unpleasant. So one way to help keep them getting done is to pair it with something that is pleasant. If having a checklist and getting it all done every week motivates you, or if putting an X on your calendar every day that you do a cleaning task motivates you because you don't want to lose your streak, do that. If having a half hour of guilt-free screen time motivates you, guilt-free because you're doing it as a reward and not done as procrastination, try that. Bubble baths, family movie night, whatever it is. Think of something you like to do and make that activity happen directly after the cleaning is done. Aside from big cleaning tasks that need to happen weekly or monthly, there are some that work best if they happen every day. Dishes and laundry are a part of these and we dealt with them earlier when we built our firm foundation of home management. Now let's revisit that. Think about how we have bedtime routines for our children. It might include brushing teeth, saying prayers, a bedtime story. We do these sort of things every day when we put our kids to bed. Now what about our house? How can we put our home to rest every night? Clearing clutter and tidying up? Or wiping counters in the kitchen and bathroom? Might be something to add to the daily dishes and laundry. By putting our house to rest, we can go to sleep knowing our home is clean and ready for a new day. Which is a lot less stressful compared to waking up knowing that the bathroom's a mess and the kitchen is cluttered. The final thing to prepare for in the cleaning department for our home management system is a big reset. If the house starts to become a disaster, even with these other systems in place, it is time to have a reset day or week if you have small babies and need to take lots of breaks during this process. In a home reset, you start by going through each room and clearing the surfaces, which basically means you need to put a bunch of things that have been left out back where they belong. Have a bag or basket or bin or something to carry around with you, where you can stash items that belong in other rooms as you tidy the room you're in. This helps clear the clutter off surfaces without you getting distracted by having to go into other rooms all the time. After tidying, it's time to declutter. Because if things have gotten overwhelming in your home, it's probably because too much stuff has been brought back into the home, which is bound to happen over time, especially with growing kids around. Then, do a wipe down of all visible surfaces. Now that you have tidied and decluttered, these surfaces should be easy to reach and this step won't take much time. Finally, tackle big things. Do a deep clean of a space that needs it. Also work on organizing a problem space. Check out my blog article on Reasons to Reorganize for some ideas on how to get started rethinking these problem spaces. Also, even if things aren't overwhelming, it's always good to do a big home reset and deep 
every spring and fall. Thank you for tuning in to this Economia Home Management Award Heaven video. Hit the like button below, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell to get notified about the release of future videos. Tell me in the comments which cleaning task matters most to you. For me, it is having clear and clean floors. Even though I love having things visual, I absolutely can't stand when my home floors are cluttered. Now that is probably why I've worked so diligently to come up with toy organization systems that work. Because I cannot relax in a space where the floor looks like a minefield or a maze of stuff. So, which cleaning task matters the most to you for your home? I look forward to reading your answers below.